This is what we take care of our home. We protect our house. Have fun, play together. Be confident. Believe you can do it. Let's go. Destiny Walker drains the three. And that was deep. You can tell she has shot a million of these. She's gonna put her head down and drive her way to the rim. Peoples finds Gilbert in transition for a basket and a foul. I like that. Westbelt open. She'll track for three. Oh, it's a white twine for Maddie Westbelt. You talked about the shooting, but how about the passing? Wash, rinse, repeat. Mabry again. Oh my goodness. She has just been deadly here in this second half. And just like that, here come the Irish. Hi, and welcome to the Neil Ivey Show, our first show for the 2020-2021 season. I'm Bob Nagel, and just absolutely pleased to be along with our new head coach, Neil Ivey. And Neil, great to uh, spend time with you and uh, in a very, very busy time of year. So many different things going on that we, we have to consider. And, uh, you know, back in the old days, you just had to coach. You didn't have to do all these COVID things. <laughs> well, it's um, amazing. And then to have you host, I'm just Super grateful for you taking the time, and I'm just super blessed. So very excited to talk. Well, there's been so many things going on, too, uh, with the uh, the program. Obviously, uh, taking over for Coach McGraw, you were very involved in the recruitment of the players that we have, and uh, you've had some success already. Looking forward to uh, next year's recruits. But uh, the biggest thing is that uh, this group that you got together, and yesterday was really the first time that uh, you had them all together, mm -hmm. It's been a little bit of a test because you've got new talent and you've got some veterans who've been on the injured list and uh, trying to meld it all together is going to take just a little bit more time. Absolutely. Um, I was, you know, very fortunate to have Michaela Vaughn back. And th that was the first time, like you said, that we've had the entire team. The last week was the first week since I've been hired that I actually had the entire team in the gym at the same time. So um, I think we're, I mean, I'm trying to work on the chemistry part of the team and just getting them getting comfortable playing together and that's just going to come with time and unfortunately with COVID you know the season being moved back we're basically doing it um, in front of the fans and you know in front of in front of everyone doing it on the fly so I thought that um, when we finally get a chance to really gel together um, I definitely think you know it's going to be an exciting exciting growth period for us um, and just super excited for the potential of this group. Yesterday you also had Sam Brunel back, uh, and uh, you got to keep an eye on how many minutes she's uh, playing until she gets back into full basketball shape, had a little bit of a foot injury. And then uh, Caitlin Gilbert had a couple of good moments, but again, uh, getting these people back up to speed, uh, you've got an idea of what they can do, but what they can do together is going to be the key. Absolutely. You know, such um, an uncertain time, and like you said, just kind of battle with injuries and just want to make sure that they're 100% healthy. That, that was the main goal and focus every every day and just w working to learn how to get better um, and to compete every day. Um, I thought Kate, Caitlin Gilbert, um, she gave us great minutes. I think Sam is just continuing to improve. But like you said, she hasn't practiced. And so I think every game she's just going to get more and more comfortable um, and she's just going to continue to grow and get better. But definitely, definitely love to, to have both of those players healthy and, and back playing with us. You know, this kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, when we started the season off with a tournament in Vancouver a few years back. We went up there with a lot of people that couldn't play. We had injuries, uh, different things going on that we had to play other people. And we found a way to win up there, but we also found a way to get younger people, inexperienced people, some serious playing time. And it really paid off as the season went on. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, Maddie is one of our standout players that has really emerged in the fir from, the, from the first game. And, you know, I'm getting some minutes from Amira a little bit, Alasia here and there. Allie Campbell got some minutes early. Um, and so, and all those minutes are very valuable, like you said, like towards um, the, the season now we're now we're in the ACC conference play. So getting those minutes early in the year is definitely going to help us and benefit down the road. Well, we'd like to talk about what we did during the exhibition games, but we didn't <laughs> have any. So you had to jump right into the fire and your first game was against Ohio University on their floor. And that's a team that many are picking to maybe challenge for the Mid-America Conference Championship we got a couple of outstanding players on that team, and uh, you took them right to the wire and uh, came from behind to make it uh, a nail-biter, but uh, a good test to start the season with. Absolutely. You know, we had some adversity. Only had seven active players. Had two that fouled out the game. Completely in the fire. Playing at Ohio. Great team. Well-coached. You know, two conference, all-conference players on that team uh, with Johnson and Hook. So I thought that was something really hard test, really great test, but I definitely felt – 
like we learned from that that game, and that that game is going to help us down the road. And I expect um, you know Ohio to 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 win out their conference. They're a really talented team, so great test for us. And I think a lot of people were able to get a pretty good book on Dara Mabry. She led it up for 34 points, an outstanding effort in her first game for Notre Dame, and you know she's capable of that. But I think uh, once you have a scouting tape, there are other people to look at. They're going to try to take certain things away, and uh, she's been very patient. She's had uh, some good assist games and played pretty good defense, but uh, she was outstanding in that game on the road. She was, and just to be her first game in a Notre Dame uniform, it was uh, – I was really proud of her. She has taken on whatever task um, that I've asked of her. She does whatever is needed for the team. She's obviously a great scorer, great three-point shooter, but she's just doing it all for us. And for a newcomer to come in right away um, is, has, you know, trusted the vision and really bought in. I'm just super appreciative of what she brings, her experience, um, her competitiveness. It was, it was awesome. So for her first game to, to have 37 points, almost a four, I said a 40 piece the first game. I was, it was unbelievable. I'm like, great. You know, it's just, I was really happy for her. She's always in the gym, extremely coachable. And she's from the Mabry tree. So I guess what can you expect? The Mabry's yeah. are all successful here. Did she get along okay with one of your assistants? Oh, uh, they're having a tough time right now. <laughs> so this is awesome just to see, to see both of them. You know, Michaela is doing so well. Um, she's such an incredible coach and she's a, you know, a bright young star in the coaching profession profession. And then just to see Dara in that uniform, just really melted my heart. You know, it's something that is very special for me knowing her from since she's been, you know, eight years old recruiting Michaela and then Marina. So it was just, you know, it's an awesome feeling just to see her on part of the family now. And I know if we had a video of their uh, battles in the driveway, that'd be pretty interesting as well. Those three girls grew up uh, playing against each other and, giving each other a tough time, but made each other better. Absolutely. I'm sure they have some great footage outside with, with um, <laughs> working them out and uh, just doing all the drills. That I mean, that's really why they've been so successful. They work and work and work. And, um, and so it's, it's definitely something that I, I feel like I see on a daily basis with, with Dara. There you go. Uh, the next game is pretty important in your uh, career and your life. Uh, your first victory as the head coach at the University of Notre Dame and it was a, a terrific uh, win for you as the uh, team came back and, and beat Miami of Ohio. I guess we were in the Ohio Conference there for a couple of games. But, uh, uh, got a nice win and had some good contributions for a lot of people. Yes, I mean, that was a special moment for me. Um, I felt the weight lifted just to feel like I got my first win. You know, I feel like this team, and they're always, even, even after the loss in Ohio, got texts from all the players, like, we want to win this one for you, Coach. So to feel that, um, energy and to feel that support and that love um, was tr tr tremendous. And then just to obviously, I, I was felt like maybe I just need to get my first win at home, at the Joy Center back in South Bend. So it was really nice. The moment I'll, I'll never forget. Well, and that uh, has been a little bit of a different setup, uh, obviously, with the, the crowd not being allowed in, although there was a good turnout of the Teddy Bear family yesterday. It was. It was a great turnout. I felt like they needed to be a little bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> We did all we could up there. Uh, let me ask you if I was a teddy bear or stuffed anyway. Um, you got some outstanding performances in that game. Uh, Maddie Westfeld's just been outstanding. She had 19 points and nine rebounds in that game. And boy, for a freshman, you know, sometimes they need a little bit of an invitation to get up to speed. But having been around her sister, Kat, and uh, learning so much being around the program, she's ready to go when she got here. Absolutely. I mean, I knew, I knew from the first workout – I've known Maddie since she's been eight years old. So I've watched her grow up. I've watched her develop, develop. But even taking a step away and coming back to have her in the first workout, I was, I was extremely impressed with, you know, her body. She has a college body already, ready-made body, but her confidence, you know, her approach to getting better every day. She's been in the gym since she stepped on this campus. And so what you all see, she earned and deserved. She puts in the work. And again, like I said, you know, she's definitely – um, she's definitely confident. And I feel like you see that and, and she's just getting more confidence and she does it all for us. And I'm just so grateful just to have such a, a, a young star that's just going to grow and continue to get better. And she's a great teammate. You know, they love yeah. playing with her. Um, she's unselfish. She does whatever is needed for the team. And so to have that as a freshman, it's going to be, you know, the future is going to be incredibly bright with her. Well, she's uh, healthy as well, which was kind of a rare commodity as we got the season underway. And Destiny Walker was outstanding in that game as well. 24 points for Destiny. And it's nice to have those kind of uh, 
uh, players on your roster, you know, in a given game, if uh, they're going to back off on somebody, we got a lot of different ways to score. Yes, you know, it's just nice to have so many scoring threats. And Desmond was on fire that game. Um, you know, she had a really good offensive game versus Ohio. She has, you know, has a lot of experience. And I just felt like she, you can tell she um, was really ready for that, for that game. It was a really great um, test to see us bounce back as a team um, and respond to the first game. And so I was, you know, really happy with offensively the way she played that game. That was a, an outstanding win, and congratulations to you. That's the first one, and I know that uh, is always going to be a special one uh, uh, for you. Uh, the team, you know, you start off with Ohio, who could win the MAC. You played uh, Miami of Ohio and got a win. Then you get to play a ranked team in Michigan. Mm-hmm. I mean, who laid this out for you? I guess Coach McGraw left you a little legacy of a, a tough schedule, but that's what you want anyway. You want to test yourself. And uh, Michigan, by the way, is a team that could contend for the Big Ten Championship. Oh, such a great team. I knew that that was going to be a huge test for us. But again, heading into the ACC after four games, I, it was it was a schedule that we needed. And I knew we were going to get tested early. And um, they definitely rose to the occasion. They were physical. You know, Nas Hillman really led that, that squad. You know, they're led by veterans, you know, juniors and seniors. And I knew it was going to be a tough test. I felt like we battled um, for most – about two to three quarters, and I thought their experience just really took over in the end. But, again, it, 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 it kind of welcomed Maddie to what physical basketball is going to be in college, um, and it was definitely um, a loss that we can learn from. Hey, you learn a lot of things from a lot of different areas. We were up by seven points in that game, and it wound up uh, being a 10-point finish. But uh, you never quit, and uh, those are the things you can control. I mean, there's certain things about the game you can control, and mm-hmm. – the experience that uh, we get as we go along are going to be uh, absolutely uh, uh, essential in the uh, progress this team can make. Absolutely. Um, I know it's, it's always tough um, losing, but I also, like you said, like, there's so many lessons um, that you can learn from losses. And I feel like every game I'm learning this team, you know, it's year one, new staff, new philosophy, um, six newcomers. And so every game is a learning experience. And so, you know, I've just been preaching, trusting the process with this group, and learning to grow together. That's that's the goal, um, is working on habits and just trying to get better every day. So that's my goal, and hopefully wins can pick up at some point. And I love what I saw yesterday. Every time somebody came off the floor, it, it, you know, there was a high five from everybody, but there was also uh, uh, Carol Owens and Michaela and uh, Coquish Washington, who's a valuable asset on the staff, uh, talking and teaching and uh, uh, getting through the uh, issues as we go along, because as I said, you didn't have any exhibition games and you just have everybody healthy. So a lot of teaching still going on. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like I have an incredible staff and I'm, I lean on them a lot for everything. Um, two veteran um, coaches within, you know, coach or CO and, and Coquise and Michaela really great at just relating to the players. And so I know, and I trust that w- they're going to be the extension of me as far as aligning with my vision knowing how to mentor. That's the biggest thing. We're, we're mentoring as, as, as well. We're going through all the pandemic and everything that we're going through, but it's all about learning, growing, and mentoring. And I feel that they're one of the best staffs in the country to do that. Well, you come back after uh, a tough loss to Michigan with a good win over IUPUI. The Jaguars came up, and again, they've got some talent on that team. And uh, you found a way to put it together. And uh, i tell you what, uh, impressive numbers uh, with rebounding in that game. There was uh, a, a lot of uh, good numbers as far as assists to baskets. And uh, it just seemed like we took a, another step in the right direction. Absolutely. And every game is going to be a hard game. And we're blessed to even play with uh, with everything that's going on. And I felt like in that game, you know, we had some stretches that we went up, you know, that we combated their, their runs. But I thought, like you just said, we found a way to win. And that's the biggest part of it, learning how to compete and finding ways to win, um, regardless of um, the score and regardless of the numbers or the, the, the point d- difference. And we found a way. And I was really, really happy about that. Um, we ended up winning, I think, by like five or seven. But it just felt good to feel like we finished the game. Um, and follow the game plan. So I was really, really proud of them for that win. Well, and uh, Madison Westbell was outstanding again. Maddie had uh, 22 points, and she also had six rebounds in that game, and it uh, helped garner her the uh, big award, uh, the Rookie of the Week in the ACC. Just wonderful to see uh, that kind of recognition for a, a freshman who's starting out uh, playing very well. Absolutely. I was so happy for her, so happy that, and it's never about the awards. And, and we were all ec- ecstatic because, again, we see it on a daily basis, what the work she puts in 
And um, it's just really translating really well. It's, it's been a very smooth transition from her from you know high school to college. And she's just getting better. I, I feel honestly that she's just scratching the surface. She's just getting she's just getting started. And so that's what's super exciting about her. Um, and just to see that she got honored already was was a huge accomplishment in such a tough league. You know, the ACC is full of extraordinary talent. So the fact that she has been recognized already just shows you the potential that she has and the impact that she's going to make in this program and this team. So I was really excited for her. And she's so humble. I mean, she's such a humble young woman and it's just, she's just a joy to coach. So I'm super grateful and blessed to have her. It seems to be a family trait. I know Kat was uh, very uh, much the same way. Wonderful parents, uh, Jim and Susan, uh, Brought us a couple of really great players. We're grateful uh, to them. We also had a couple other players. Sam Burnell had 11 points in that game and uh, also a nice performance by Anaya Peoples. And again, we're talking about uh, people that over the course of the season last year were leading scorers and, and uh, things like that. But we've got so many uh, potentially uh, great scorers that uh, when we get the chemistry right and get the right people in the right situations, I, I really think we've got a, a, a real high side to us this year. Thank you. And yes, in the day of being out, um, the, we were led by a freshman, and have, you know, two sophomores. And so very young um, and inexperienced. And I think, again, they're gaining the experience along the way. And I was really proud of Anaya's effort. She has kept, come, she came back from her shoulder surgery after quarantine in great shape, confident, ready to play. And, and I know as, you know, having the adversity of sitting out, being here as a student athlete, you learned a lot from just watching from the sidelines. I think she learned a lot last year being out and she just was ready to play this year. And I'm just, you know, I've been really excited for her, for her return. And she's another one that just high character does whatever I ask of her. So great teammate. And just, you know, happy that it's paying off for her as well. Uh, well our most recent game against Georgia tech, uh, I always come up on the short end of that one. Um, but, you know, people got to understand about Georgia Tech. They were 0-14 against us as a program, and they just couldn't wait. And, by the way, they've got uh, probably three players that are going to see some action in the WNBA, if not on the uh, all-conference team. This is a very talented team, and uh, uh, Kubai is a solid performer. She did a great job inside, and uh, McQueen was outstanding from three-point range and uh, just seemed like every time we got it healed up and broke out in a new spot, and they had some people that had a uh, very good game shot, 52% against us. And uh, that's a very good team at Georgia Tech. Very good team. I thought they did a great job playing against Boston College. Their, their first ACC game, they were really impressive. And then, so I knew that was going to be a tough matchup. Kubai mm-hmm. leading the league um, in rebounding. She's just a physical, um, you know, extraordinary post, post player. And I thought they played well as a team. I thought um, they capitalized on our mistakes and turnovers and I just felt like they just played um they out they outworked us really last night so it was a great it's a great first test for us in the ACC and every night we know that we're we're contending we're 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 playing against great great talent great teams the ACC is a, it's extremely you know strong conference and so um I thought it was tough coming up short but also again another opportunity to learn and grow Happy to have Mick in that lineup and to, to have her to, to play. And again, like you said, once we start building the chemistry and get the right, the right fit, um, I think that we you know, will be able to compete. But definitely hats off to Georgia Tech and Nell Forder, my, my former um, coach in the WNBA, you know, you right. know, great team, well coached. Well, and, uh, you know, one of the things I liked about the game, too, and it's great to have Mikhail Vaughn back in the lineup and mix, uh, worked really hard to get back. And you wanted to wait till she was healthy enough. You don't want to put her in too early. But we actually uh, out-rebounded Georgia Tech 34-30 to 30 in that game. And uh, it was great to have at different times some pretty good size out there on the floor. And uh, I thought we, uh, we did some good things. We had some chances inside that just wouldn't go, but they will. And uh, we were out there battling on the boards. It was a pretty physical game as well. Absolutely. It was really nice to have a really big lineup. So I tried some different things. Um, thought we set the tone really well in the first half. Came up short right before halftime. And then um, I thought, you know, Georgia Tech really got the momentum in the second half. And that was, you know, we were trailing most of the second half. And just trying to find a way. Again, these are hard games. Every game is going to be a tough battle for us. But we just have to learn how to sustain runs. Um and answer runs and then find a way to compete to win. I think that's what the next phase of, of our growth and this is our defense. I think that was something that um, we're going to continue to have to grow and to get better defensively. I think that 
what dictated the game, you know, our energy and our defense. And that's something that we're going to work on. And so hopefully, you know, Thursday we can come out with a better defensive effort. Well, we missed a few free throws in that first half too. That was a, a little bit of a problem. But uh, again, you look at Maddie Westfeld, six out of six for the ball game from the line. She's doing so many things well, but those things will come along. You know, we've had time, we've had years in the past where we we're 62, 64, 65% after the first those six or seven games and wind up 75%. That's what we do here. And uh, I don't have any problem thinking that that's the way it's going to be. We've got some uh, very talented, outstanding, disciplined shooters. And uh, I think we'll be fine in that area too. Yes. I just think we're going to continue to grow um, and just have, you know, just have to have that patience and um, learn to work to get better every day. I think that's the goal always. So I will always, always talk about just working to get better. And I think that they have the right mindset. We're going to continue to work. And I think, you know, if we can do a better job defensively, I'm hoping that that translates um, to our offense on the offensive end. But I think, just being tougher defensively and having a better defensive effort for 40 minutes is what we're working towards. Well, you're uh, glad to have you with us here for the Neil Ivy show. The first one of those, I feel like uh, my first win getting a chance to work <laughs> on the show and our show brought to you by the tire rack.com. And they want to remind you that they're uh, contact free and easy. It's the way that uh, tire buying should be. And they've been a great uh, sponsor for uh, the uh, shows for our coaches over the years. We appreciate Tire Rack. And don't forget, winter's, uh, well, it's already here, I guess. It's getting cold enough. But when the weather gets a little uh, soggy out there and there's a little snow on the ground, make sure you've got safe tires. They do all the track testing here in uh, South Bend. So contact the TireRack.com when you can. Neil, we're going to be back in a little bit and talk some more about the upcoming schedule for the Irish. But uh, great to be with you. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to the DL Ivy Show. Welcome to the DL Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. We have a very special segment for you now. It is called our Full Court Press, and it features Sam Brunell. And her special guest this week is Maddie Westbelt. And this segment brought to you by Bowling Vision Center. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Full Court Press. Today, we have guest Madeline Westbelt also known to all of us usually as Maddie. As a freshman here at Notre Dame, she's you know a couple games shy of breaking the record of double digit points in a, in a game in a row. And she's also the team's current um, leading scorer and rebounder. However, she's also a person outside of just the hoops, which is what I think a lot of the fans usually see. So we're gonna try to get to know you a little bit outside of just the basketball piece, Maddie. I know that we've had conversations you and I have about cooking a lot. You are preparing a meal for Coach Ivy. What plate would you prepare for her? Oh my gosh. I would probably pass that right along to my dad. <laughs> I would probably let him, let him take over for that. Kind of going back in time a little bit, before you got to Notre Dame, what are some of your fondest childhood memories? Outside of basketball, I would say my favorite childhood memory is probably going to Canada with my family. Every year we would take a trip to Canada and we had this little um, cabin on the lake that we would go to. No phones, no internet, um, just like a getaway. Uh, for a week and we would go fishing and all the outdoorsy activities. So that's probably my favorite outside of basketball. In basketball, probably going to nationals. You know, like going to Orlando every year. It's so much fun with, um, our, with space of like just making a whole trip out of it. We would stay in a house and just spend some time together and then compete. We would go to like that worldwide a sports complex. It was so fun. The last thing I wanted to do with you for a little bit of fun is I wanted to do a couple rapid fire questions with you. All right. They're literally the most random questions and it's gonna be super fun. You ready? Yep. All right, question number one. If you had a cat, what would you name it? Fluffy. <laughs> okay, okay, Fluffy. Um, if you could only use ketchup or mustard as a sauce for the rest of your life, which one would you use? Mustard. <laughs> Would you rather be an only child or a child of 11? Child of 11. I love siblings. Green or blue? Blue. LeBron uh, or Jordan? Jordan. Okay. Touchdown Jesus or the Grotto? 
Ooh, the grotto. Is socks and sandals a style thing or not a style thing? I could I could do socks and sandals. Okay. Okay. And last one, snow or rain? Snow. <laughs> that, snow. I love that. Me too. I would so pick snow over rain. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate y'all joining in for our short segment of Full Court Press with Maddie. We will see you next time. And we welcome you back to the Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. They also bring you this feature from distance. And Neil Ivy's special guest is Lynette Wookie. How are we doing, everybody? I'm Lynette, and we are doing our first edition from From Distance. We are with Coach Ivy. How are we doing, Coach? We're doing well. Doing Good. okay. Yes. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today, and we are talking about music. I want to know what you think your top songs of 2020 are. You know what's funny? This year, being with the Grizzlies, they put me on to a little bit. We paid. I think that's the name of it. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's 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 stretching. I'm, I'm I was stretching outside my comfort zone because that was a whole new. Um, oh really? Artist that I didn't know about till last year. I'm like, oh, that's what my son plays all the time. <laughs> so. I'm well, that was to... my question. I was gonna say, what is so? If that's out of your comfort zone, then what's in your comfort zone? What music are you listening to most of the time? I'm a big R&B. You know, huge Beyonce fan. And I'm a creature of habit, so if I like, you know, some type of song or playlist, I'll play it over and over, over again. So, would you say that Beyonce is your favorite artist, or do you have others that kind 100%. of? Oh yeah, I've been to all of the concerts. I'm part of the Beehive. I'm a probably the oldest member of the Beehive. <laughs> um, love Beyonce, so yeah. I want to know what do you listen to. Pre-game. What's on your pre-game playlist or even when you're driving to the stadium? Um, what kind of gets you hyped and focused for games? You know what? I'm honestly, this is because I'm a very spiritual person, so I listen to gospel. Mm-hmm. Give me some names of songs, artists that you like to listen to to kind of get you in the right headspace. That's yeah. awesome, by the way. That's not the answer I was Yeah, I, I need to, because I meditate every day, so like... Oh, okay. Like 12 o'clock games and 2 o'clock games, so I have to get in that space every every time I wake up. Just mm-hmm. It's like a peaceful, zen, grateful, blessed type state. I have to, I start my day that way. So Pierre Sheard um, is a gospel artist I love, Tasha Cobb Leonard. Um, you know, Mar- Marvin Sapp it gets, gets me in that grateful, peaceful spirit. What would you say is your guilty pleasure music? Or one of my playlists, um, Let It, Let it uh, Go or whatever. Let it go, let it go. Oh, it, <laughs> from Frozen? Let it snow, but let it go. Frozen, okay. that would probably be the one song I'm like, I actually really like that song. Are you into any other Disney music or just, it's just Frozen that they got you? It was um, just- probably just Frozen. I, I like the Lion King. I really, really love Lion King. So some songs on Lion King, I'm like, powerful. Did you watch the new Lion King or like, are you big on the classic one? Oh, I watched the new one because Beyonce was in it. So. I was going to say, Beyonce was in it. I went to the movie theaters for that one. So that would definitely oh, really? be a guilty pleasure, I guess. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite song off the new uh, Lion King then? The Gift from Beyonce, I like that. Uh, water from that. Yeah. Gift. Yeah, that's my favorite. And did you watch her uh, visual the album? The Girl, uh, that was, when it came out, I was like, so mm-hmm. empowering. You yeah, know, I, I, oh, like I love her. that song. Career woman, you know, wife, mother, you know, balances both, super, super positive, you know, and, like I said, an empowering image and figure, so that's why I like her. This kind of turned Beyonce themed, I knew it would. Well, thank you so much, Coach. Thank and you. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in from, from a distance. And we welcome you back to the Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. This is a segment we're gonna call Catching Up With. And who's she catching up with this week? Well, in her first show, she wanted to visit with a very special young lady, big part of the Irish program, and really her first recruit here at Notre Dame. And we're going to get a chance to hear from Skylar Diggins Smith. This is the first radio show, so I felt like okay, this is had to talk to an Irish legend. One of the reasons why I'm here is obviously Notre Dame, Christian Girl, but it's also you. I feel like, uh, but it's bullshit. We are not. We're not going to cry. This is going to be not. our first show, so we got to head. We got to head lit for the first show. You know, <laughs> they might use some of this stuff. You know, you never know. Yeah, it's I mean, they can. Conversational, so. I mean, we're giving them gold right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is crew. This is amazing. So, well, welcome, Skylar, for catching up with Coach Ivy on my first radio show. So thank you um, for being a part of it. <laughs> 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 
thank you for being a part of the show. So before I get started and ask you some really tough questions, I want to know how you're doing. What's up? You know, first of all, we talk all the time, but, you know, just first and formally, congratulations on starting the first season and, you know, you guys being able to, to stay safe and, you know, you getting the girls back on the floor. Like, that's a big deal. So congratulations, first of all. And congratulations on this show. This is pretty dope. This is pretty dope. Yeah, I'm good. I'm here in Arizona. You know, I'm in Phoenix now training. Um, last year, obviously, got traded from Dallas to Phoenix. So now just finally making the transition and, and settling into Phoenix. So and stay healthy, just trying to stay healthy and stay ready. You know, you know how that goes. But we right. settling, we settling into Phoenix. We like you. That's awesome. How's it's motherhood? Not, you know, seven, he's he's getting bigger. He's he's about to be two coming up at the top of the year. Crazy. So, you know, I hope this this whole terrible two thing is a myth. You know, <laughs> we're going we're going to talk outside the radio show. Yeah, about that yeah. one. You got to you got to give you got to give me and Daniel some some tips about these terrible twos I've been hearing about. But he's just getting so big. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go back. I want to take you back to 2008 um, being recruited. Coach McGraw, she was like, I want, I want to offer you the position. I'm like, great. She goes, you're first. This is what you need to do when you first get here. I'm like, what? She goes, get Skylar Diggins. <laughs> and, like, and my biggest, one of the biggest moments I think I've had as an assistant outside of all, all the success that you've helped us create and all the success of the program was landing you mm. here. That was one of my biggest moments as an assistant. You know, um, that was crazy. So that was I, crazy. I want to know why, why Notre Dame? Like you, I'm a huge you know, family girl, you know, I, I really love the idea of playing in front of my mother, having everything, you know, all in one for me, the location, you know, first and foremost, being in my backyard, you know, having you and Coach McGraw, who I felt like I had known, you know, since I was 10, 11 years old, because I came to all the camps and won all the awards, by the way. All I won the awards, and I won an award, and you presented me one of the awards. I mean, I just wanted you guys to see me. You know, I was just, <laughs> you know, like when your crush comes to the gym, you know how they say, do about 16 in between the legs. Um, but no, nah, it was it was the one-on-one competition, and you actually presented me the award. And that was like, I was like, damn, I told my mom, like, Neil, you know, that was that was a huge deal for me. But really, it was it was the atmosphere. I had been in the stands. I saw the crowds. You know, Indiana basketball, it was just something I couldn't pass up. So it's no secret. It's no secret how I feel about Notre Dame. And a big reason why is, is because of you and, 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 and Coach McGraw. But obviously, you know, you guys are a big reason in our relationship. It was, it was so strong. I trusted you guys. I, I worked vulnerable with you guys. And, you know, me and you spent hours in the gym before school, after school, at night, after the game, right. we, before the game, if we didn't like something, you know, down in the pit before the game working, it was just, it really was, yeah. <laughs> Love that. I, that was a, actually a perfect, perfect answer. And the impact that you left on this program and the impact that you left on me is, you know, we're not, we're not, we couldn't yeah. say do that. Not we see football. each other. We In see fact, each other. All right. Favorite basketball, favorite Irish moment? Uh, it probably was the senior night game. It was a triple overtime win. That was just, oh my God. It was so emotional. It was just so much on the line. You know, UConn was always, you know, they were UConn. They were great. They were at the top uh, at the moment. And I just remember all those names that played in that game. Like looking back on it with, um, you know, myself and K-Mac and Natalie Achamwa, Jewel, you know, on the other side, they had Brianna Stewart and Bria Hart. It was just so many people that are in the league now, you know, it's insane that was on that court. So I just never forget um, that game. That was my last official, you know, game, senior night. So that was, that was insane, triple overtime for sure. To be honest, I watched that game once a year ever since yeah. I left Notre Dame, at least, because that is just like, it's just the good old days. You know what I'm saying? It's just the good old days. And I, I miss that. I miss how pure that basketball was. You know what I'm saying? How innocent, how pure that that basketball was. Show how hard it is to get there. And that's what your impact has done for this program. To be able to do that year after year after year. It's hard. It's you know, hard. I, I think sometimes even with this facility, we have all these banners and we have these Final Four logos. It we make you almost 
made it look easy, you know? And it's like, it's hard. So the fact that, you know, you literally helped propel us back to the top and it's and hard. So it kind of just hard. shows how powerful your presence and how powerful your impact has been for this program. Would you yeah, say? yeah, no, you know, it, does, it doesn't just come, it doesn't just come uh, with the jersey, you know, it's, it's the time that you put in and that's the standard that you guys set and you always kept people that were um, true to the game and, mm -hmm. and really you had to go with that culture and it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like it's not everybody's cup of tea. Like if you want it the easy way, if you don't want to be criticized, like me and you got video on camera of, of, of you, you know, getting on me. This segue, that's a great segue into my next question. See, <laughs> see, I'm telling you. And do you think I want to hear that? It's kind of like, you need to- Baby Scott, Baby Scott. This is, this is a segment called Caption, the, Caption That. What, oh what's, what, what do you think is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody that know us know what's going on. So, <laughs> you telling me that, you know, I got to get the rim. I got to get the rim. I got to get back on defense. You know, you telling me um, I got to be aggressive, you know. Sometimes you be like, Sky, go to the ball. Go get the ball. <laughs> go to the basket. But, no, it's, it, it's, it's always instruction. But you know what? I, at the end of the day, I do feel like, you know, you guys, you guys are our biggest fans. And I just feel like, you know, if you come to Notre Dame, it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy or just these overnight success stories. Mm -hmm. And everybody's success at Notre Dame is, is our success. Like, we celebrate it as it's our own. Like, when we left, that when, when you guys won again and Enrique hit them shots, like, you know, we were so lit. <laughs> you know, it was just – we were so happy because right. I'm from South Bend. My husband's from South Bend. So it just – kind of made me feel like a fan again, you know, watching these games. But to see it come full circle, it was like, whew, like, yes. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, I'm like, somebody did it, yes. What advice, I guess, anything else you would like to give, either the current team or just, just in general with your experience? Just challenge yourself, push yourself to see how high your elevator can go. Because a lot of times I think we put limits on ourselves because we're uncomfortable. You know, we feel like, oh, man but I'm tired. I don't know if I could do another full court layup. You know, I'm tired. I don't know if I could do a two minute tip, you know, but I think it's in those moments. That's, that's where you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. So be comfortable. Like you said, with being uncomfortable for mm -hmm. one next, I would say find, you know, mentors and like positive people that think like you, I think through a lot of my like challenging times, it was easy to go to people that I felt like, Oh man, have been through what I've been through or her, you know, have, are at where I want to go or just like-minded people that I can vent to, talk to, you know, bounce off ideas from, get the real from, who's going to be real and tell me the real. Right. Because um, sometimes people tell you what they think you want to hear. But I think just having people you can trust, mentors, be a star in your role. Like be a star in your role. It's so many things that don't show up on the stat sheet that are so valuable to the game and contribute to the game. And I think doing those thankless jobs, you know, the ones that do them well is people in the league that I know 13, 14 years, 12 year, 10 year careers, just playing defense, you know, just getting rebounds, just boxing out, stopping the ball. It's a thankless job, you know, getting the rim. It's a thankless job. Um, bumping, that is a thankless <laughs> job. <laughs> you know, bumping in the zone, you know, guarding a high post in the zone. That's a thankless job, but somebody got to do it, you know? And I think whoever is stars in their roles are going to be the most successful, you know, just really being able to say, do you truly sacrifice for the greater good as far as you just want the team to be successful and whatever it is that you need to do in that moment, do that, be a champion in your role because every role is important. Every role is important. And it really does come down, in my experience, to the little things. That's the difference between being a good team and a great team. Absolutely. So in, in this unique time, I guess my advice for the team personally would be just to create your own energy, like create your own atmosphere, whatever you want your atmosphere to be, and, and make sure that it's consistent. Like, you know, root for each other, you know, even when you pissed off, you know, 
even when you got two fouls, because I know Neil do that same rule, and you got to sit out in the first half, you know what I'm saying? You know, cheer for your teammates. You inspire so many women. You're a mother, and that that's that's a whole nother challenge. You're a mother, you're a wife, you know, just really, just amazing. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for the voice that you give young women. Thank you for what you've given to the, the program. Thank you for what you've given to women in general. Um, you've been the face for so long and you, you, you have earned and deserved everything that you have received, all your accolades, all your awards, you've earned it. And I've watched you work. Yeah. I've never met anyone that works harder than you. And I promise you that I, I've met a lot of people. I've never met anyone that works harder than you. That's um, huge. You know how I feel about that. I appreciate yes. that. No one knows that. I, I see, I've seen it from the, from the grind from the beginning. Um, your first workout, I'll give you, I'll give you my favorite Skylar story. Oh gosh. Your first workout, we went, we went to pit um, mm -hmm. and we're going to work out. It was a little first workout as a freshman. She's so nervous. Paul, mad because you could, it, it, whatever drill it was, maybe it would have been three in a row in whatever spot, whatever it was. We that to ourselves, kid. That just shows your competitiveness. That shows your willingness to want to be great. And when I had that first workout, you were almost in tears, remember? Almost in tears because you didn't get that drill. It was your first workout with me. You wanted to impress me. So you, you know, you wanted to make it perfect. Be and so good, that, after that, I'm like, I'm studying NBA. I'm studying college men's basketball. I'm studying, you know, high profile women's basketball coaches to make sure that I got to continue challenging you because oh, yeah. you are that, that level of excellence that you bring on every, every moment and everything that you do, you bring a level of excellence that I've never seen. You have completely inspired me from day one, because as an assistant coming in, working with somebody of your level, your talent, your character made me raise my level as an assistant, you know? So it's like, I want to say this before we get off is I, I know that, our relationship has been so special and, and I've helped you develop and all that good stuff, but you've inspired me and made me better as well. And so, and I feel like that's what's so special about us. It's so special about you is um, the impact you've had on Notre Dame of my life, my son's life. You were his first role model. It was, if people are asking, like, who's your favorite player? He said, Skyler. When he, was a baby, when he was young. Like he had to come to the games. Mom, you want to see Sky today? Four years old, three years old. Uh, can I, can I go? Yes, Jaden, you can come. Every game, then you you know he you wore the the number four shirt and had coach wear when you said yes to Notre Dame. Just like I don't know if you really even understand the impact you've had on my life, my son's life, but Notre Dame, and then the women's basketball community, just a game. Um, and I've always admired you for that. Like you've always inspired me, and so I'm hoping that I've always you know have helped you and inspired you. But I just want you to know how much you have inspired me from day one. I appreciate that. Um, no, I appreciate day, that. I, I appreciate I, it. So I just want to honor you and thank you for all that you've done for me and all that you've done for everyone. You have a voice in, in every that. aspect. Your voice thank in the you. summer, the voice in the community, talking about social justice, more than a vote. You do so many things. Um, you always wear so many hats. And I just want to say thank you and honor you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. And thank you guys and for giving me a platform and for, for meeting me where I'm at, for meeting me where I was at. You guys <laughs> met me where I was at. And Thank you. I'll always be grateful to Notre Dame. Y'all know I always got y'all back and I love you. So congratulations. Thank you. And welcome back to the Neil Ivy Show. It's time for our look ahead brought to you by West Bend. And uh, Neil, a lot to look forward to, especially being in the conference play now. And uh, when you look ahead, Virginia Tech's coming in. What are your thoughts about the Hokies? Oh, just an incredible team. Um, have two prolific scores on that team. Um, well coached again just every night it's going to be a battle and so very excited to bring to bring them here to South Bend and looking forward to having another opportunity to respond um, after losing to Georgia Tech so any opportunity to play this game you know I'm super excited um, I know it's going to be a tough battle um, and you know looking forward to it. Well they may be having a little bit of a book on Dara Mabry so we'll have to see what they do defensively they know her well. They do so it's, it's, it's interesting for her to you know to go up against her her, um, you know, former team. So we're going to have to just try to rein her in because I know she's going to be very excited, but just looking forward to it. Well, we look ahead. We uh, also want to mention that we've got a couple of terrific recruits who have committed for next year. You know, when you think ahead about building the program, the talent you have, and uh, talk uh, quickly about the two uh, young ladies who are going to be part of our program next year. Oh, I'm super excited to talk about them and that it's legal to talk about them. So Olivia yeah. Miles, an incredible dynamic point guard. She was 
um, the first person to commit it. And so she'll always be um, someone that's going to be very special and dear to me in my heart. She's my first recruit. Um, and she's from New Jersey. Just, again, explosive, you know, great in transition. She's got a dynamic flair. She, you're going to see behind the back passes. You know, she is <laughs> going to be probably one of the flashiest coin guards we've ever had in this program. So I'm excited to see how it, she will um, you know, lead, lead our team. And I just know that she's just going to bring a whole new level of confidence and swag um, to our team. And then Sonia Citron, she is an all purpose. Um, she's going to remind you of Jackie Young a little bit. She basically does whatever one through four, great shooter, um, really athletic, um, loves to defend, can rebound. You know, she just wants to do the dirty work. And so you got, we're going to, you're going to love, you're going to love her game. Um, both of them extremely coachable, high character, super bright and academic, high academic. And just, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a, a better first, you know, sign, signing class. So I, I feel that I, I hit a home run on both of them and I cannot wait for them to, um, to join us here. Well, it's not often that just two players can get you a top five recruiting class, but they've done that and you've done that. And we congratulate you and we're uh, glad to get a chance to look ahead, not only to the next game with Virginia Tech, but also to the players going to join us next year. Neil, wish you all the best of luck and uh, stay healthy and keep, uh, keep that spirit going. Uh, that's uh, been a part of you for so many years, giving it back to our young people here at Notre Dame. And this has been the look ahead brought to you by West Bend. I'm Bob Nagel for Neil Ivy. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Bob.